Typing matrices in Microsoft Word is actually really easy, but it can be frustrating if you don't know what to do. Firstly, it takes a lot of clicks to actually get to the matrix menu inside the equation tab. And secondly, once you got to the matrix menu, you see that there's actually only a limited number of options, which goes up to only a 3x3 matrix. So if you want something that's larger than a 3x3, or a vector that is longer than 3 columns or 3 rows, it is not obvious how to do that. So the quickest way is actually to use the Word's equation syntax. That way you can not only perform the action fully with your keyboard without reaching to your mouse or your trackpad, but also create any size and any configuration of matrices that you like. So first you have to create an equation environment by clicking insert equation or better yet as usual use your shortcut to do that. I have a separate video on setting up the most convenient keyboard shortcuts so check that out in the description if you like. Once you have the equation environment up type slash matrix and then open brackets. What you'll see is the letters slash matrix becomes a little solid black box and once you see that you're ready to construct the dimensions of your matrix. From here the two main keys to remember is at and and. So each and key separates out a new column and each at key separates out a new row. So you can think of it as by default it is one by one and if you want a new column you type a number of ands and if you want a new row you type a number of ands. So for example if I want a 3 by 3 matrix all I need is two ands and two and. So that creates two new rows and two new columns making it 3 by 3. All you have to do now is close the brackets and type space and you'll see it compiles into a 3x3 matrix. Now usually we also want this inside a round bracket, so there are a number of different ways you can do this. My personal favorite and the quickest way for me is actually to hold on to shift and use your arrow keys to navigate backwards to select the whole matrix you just created. Then hit command C to copy the matrix and now actually type open brackets, close brackets and space to overwrite the matrix that you just created. Now I don't have to worry because I have copied my matrix so all I have to do is use the arrows keys to navigate back one space inside that little box area and hit command V to paste that matrix inside. Sometimes I also like to put in two spaces, one before and one after the matrix. In my opinion it looks a little bit better. And now you can go in and fill in the elements of the matrix as you wish. Once you know how to do this, creating a matrix any dimensions is extremely easy. Let's try to create a 4x4 four four one. So as usual, go to a new line where you want to create a matrix. I use command equals equals to create an equation environment with my shortcut and then type slash matrix open brackets and as soon as you see the word matrix turns into a little black box you're ready to determine your dimensions. So this time to create a 4x4 four four matrix we want to create three new rows and three new columns. So I'll type three new ads and three and signs. Remember each ad creates a new row, each and creates a new column. Then close your brackets and type space. Perfect. Now you'll get your 4x4 four four matrix very very easily. As you can imagine it really can be any dimensions, it doesn't have to be a square matrix. For example if you want a 2x3 matrix you can do the same procedure, use the shortcut to call out the equation environment, type slash matrix, open brackets, type one at and two ands. So you create one new row, making it two rows, and two new columns, making it three columns. Close your brackets and type space, and there you go. Similarly, if you want three rows and two columns instead, here's how you do it. And obviously if you want a simple column vector, this is the same philosophy. This time you don't need any new columns, but you just need the number of rows that you need. For example, a simple 2D vector, just type slash matrix, open brackets, one at, close the brackets, space, and there you go. Now to put this together into a proper workflow, you might actually want the outside brackets created together with the matrix itself. So if you know exactly what you want, you can first type the open brackets on the left and then create a matrix as we talk about. Do slash matrix, create whatever dimension you like. Close the first brackets, which completes the matrix part of it. Then close the second bracket, which is the outer bracket that you want. Then hit space. If you slow down the procedure, you actually see that after the second closing bracket, the matrix already compiles because the brackets itself acts as a delimiter, which tells Word to compile anything before that. So it compiles the matrix. Now when you hit space one more time, Word is able to detect that you have an outer open bracket on the far left and combined with the closing bracket on the far right, it will expand that to the correct size so it encloses your vector or your matrix completely and automatically. And as usual, I like to put a space before and after the matrix and the outer enclosing brackets because once I put in the numbers, it is usually very cramped and it looks better this way. So of course, these spaces can be typed from the very beginning as you type and create a matrix structure rather than put it back in post like I'm doing now. So usually I'll do it in one go and have those spaces typed from the beginning, but I just wanted to show the essential keys first and the aesthetics and workflow second. Speaking of workflow, one last thing I want to show you is you can actually type in the actual numbers, so the elements of the matrix or your vectors, as you create the structure of the matrix all in one together. So here's the example how to do this. So it is the same procedure to start, you type slash matrix, open brackets. Once you get to determine the structure, you actually type in what is the elements of it. So you type in whatever the number or the variables that you need in the elements and use every AND key to separate um, for the next column entry. So once you're done with one full row, type AT and then enter all the entries for the next row. Once you're done with all that, close your brackets, hit space, you see the matrix is fully compiled with all the entries inside in its place. Again, like I said before, if you know exactly what you want, you can already have the outer left bracket and then now you just have to close your outer brackets and it'll automatically have it inside the bracket. 
or if you need to do it in post like this, my favorite way is just highlight that whole matrix, hit Command C, or you can actually do Command X, so you can either copy or cut. I like to just copy and overwrite it with a bracket like this, hit one space, so it compiles it into an enclosing bracket, which means whatever you put inside this little bracket it will actually expand and resize it according to whatever the content in this bracket is. I also actually type the two spaces inside first, and then use the arrow key to navigate one step back into the middle before I paste the matrix. So I automatically get the spacing before and after the main elements of the matrix. So here's a few extra tips on how I usually do this. Counterintuitively, I actually don't always insert the numbers or type the elements as I build up the matrix because a lot of times, at least for myself, I don't actually visualize the matrix linearly from left to right and from top to bottom, but rather as a whole picture on its own. So when it comes time to fill in the elements of the matrix, I don't necessarily in my head fill it in linearly or chronologically. So I actually prefer to create the basic structure first and then navigate using my arrow keys into each of the position and fill in the elements one by one as I remember the matrix or as I build up the matrix that I want to write. And then once I'm done with the content, I hold shift and arrow keys to highlight the whole matrix, copy it, put in the outer brackets, the spacings, and paste it in the middle of the brackets like that. So this is just what works best for me, and if you have any other tips, feel free to leave it in the comments below, I'd love to see them as well. So if you've seen my other videos about typing LaTeX-like syntaxes in Word, you can actually combine those knowledge and type full mathematical statements very quickly and efficiently, and keeping both of your hands on the keyboard the whole time. So hope you've enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you want to support more content like this, feel free to click the like and subscribe button. And if you have any specific suggestions or ideas that you want me to make a video about, leave that down in the comments and I can probably do that next. Hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching and hope you have a nice day.